Hello malty, magnificent malt mineral milkers. As a malt mention, I'm Ralphie here in the Bothy and the provider of our malt mention introducing Ralphie Review 970 is Peter Lachowski. Thank you Peter. Um, it's it's a whiskey review. Yeah, another one. I have contemplated actually doing a rum review shortly and doing some Armagnac reviews later in the year. But I'll wait till summer when it's a little bit quieter because to be honest, can, can, I sh can we talk? Can we talk? I want to share something with you. I want you to think about this. If I was to review a Johnny Walker or a Chivas Regal, I'd get something like 20,000 views in my channel within a couple of days. If I happen to review a known single malt, it's half that. And if it's an, a really unknown single malt, like the one I'm about to review, there'll be even fewer reviews. But if I was to review a rum or an Armagnac, um, the, the audience viewing figures really, really do, drops. And the reason I'm mentioning this to you now is that with the price of whiskey, the price of good and availability of good quality liquors, not just whiskey, but good quality spirits from around the world, it's really helpful, particularly when you're on a budget, to not and keep your vision too narrow on either poor quality Scotch whisky that you'll find with some of the blends or decent quality but expensive single malts which are really going to blow your budget out the water particularly if you become a whisky fan and that's very easy to do to get caught up in the fever of the culture because alcohol is an emotive thing but if you're prepared to explore and buy carefully, there's other spirits out there that will give you some magnificent smell and taste experiences that are not Scotch whisky. It just so happens that on this channel, I primarily review Scotch whisky, but also other spirits, just to remind you that they're out there, that in fact, part of the skills of enjoying the liquor is doing background research Asking around, visiting a whiskey festival or a rum festival, or ideally both, but not at the same time. Although I do notice at some whiskey festivals they have rum sections, and that's a really, really good thing to see. Um, but anyway, I, I won't digress any further with that. I really want to conclude by saying please be open minded. It's not just whiskey anymore. I mean, I've tasted some Armagnac recently, and for the price, it was such a positive experience. And I want to introduce that to you later in the year, but probably I'll wait to summer when people are on holiday. <laughs> anyway, let's pour some of this, da this damn Scotch single malt whiskey. I had to get that off my chest. I had to tell you. It's something that I'm mindful of that People are getting, I get, I get the messages, I read the comments and people get excited that they've paid quite a lot for a, a Scotch single malt but still haven't really done their homework and they're kind, kind of enjoying it and I can tell by the language that some people are pretending to enjoy the product because they believe that they should. Don't, don't over don't over praise anything that you have contact with over and above your own personal experience don't get caught up in the fever now i'm engaged in a short series of non-age statement whiskies it's something i didn't used to review as a matter of course the reason I've changed my mind about this is because there are some young single malt whiskies that don't carry an age statement and actually they deliver 
a good quality experience. And my particular review is a first. It's the first time I've reviewed this distillery. It's not just been only on my radar for a number of years. It's been getting quite a lot of conversation even before the first whiskey appeared in the market simply because they seem to be ticking all the boxes for the modern contemporary whiskey to market theme and that is authenticity um, showing not marketing not just saying but actually showing quality and connecting visibly connecting through the presentation with the informed educated whiskey drinker and and in in my opinion this is simply showing respect it's from the Isle of Rassi little distillery in the Isle of Rassi it started opened its doors completely modern distillery in 2017 and it was quite evident from the start that a lot of conversation was kick, conversation was kicking off because it was an old school style of distillery. Its aim was to be flavor flavor is flavor focused no flavor focused and to deliver for the premium for the price being asked to deliver a good whiskey. I noticed the first bottling which came out last year. I thought was well hang about it's only about four maybe five years old it's a little bit young but there was quite a lot of fever about it being being the inaugural bottle release I did ask around and decided to wait for the next bottling and I think I was right to do so I think bottling series number two from Rassi Distillery which has appeared in the market in 2022 is a significant step up in terms of quality and it's a fascinating character characterful distillery so I'm going to give you the nose on it for starters and then I'm going to give you a little bit more off the label because this is really quite important and any modern distilleries really need to be doing this and having these new distilleries and they're very small and it's probably not available where you are but I'm placing a review on the internet so that when you do find it as and when you see it wherever you are you've got a point of reference the nose creamy barley sugars soft vanillas there's a background hint of peatiness, but such is the richness of the grain that it's not particularly prominent initially on the nose. However, once it settles down, and especially when you add water, this will become more prominent. If it reminds me of any previous peated whiskey, I would say probably some of the independent bottlings of Port Ellen. Um, that came from Gordon and MacPhail quite a number of years ago in which are very very hard to find now and shockingly expensive so you don't want to waste your money to be honest fresh fruit apple and slightly nutty we're getting we almond notes a little bit of general nuttiness so it's not one specific nut I'd say a little bit almond slight hazelnut note as well it's a characterful, individual and singular dram this. And I have to say, because I have been doing my research as you would expect me to do, I'm very impressed with this. This is seriously well made stuff and it shows at a young age. I'll give you a wee bit more information on this. First of all, this is R02. So this is the basically second edition, edition bottling and it's stating on the label quite clearly natural colour, non-chill filtered. Very, very important. You need to separate, modern small distilleries need to have very clear identity beyond the generic mass marketed stuff which has been heavily cosmeticised and is, is kind of 
out there, particularly in airports and such like, under bright lights and in very sanitised environments, which, to be honest, in my opinion, rob these these whiskies of their of their identity to a certain extent. It's been bottled at forty six point four percent, and I want to go on and give you a wee bit more information here. Rasi are doing something important. They are not quite Springbank level yet, but they do bottle the whisky at the distillery. This is important that you know this, because it means that the water they use to make the whisky is the water they're using, the local water, well water, mineral water, from the ground, from the island, underneath the distillery, this is what they're using to reduce the strength of the whisky, and this is giving it a very understated but important terroir. Also, you may like to know that they they mention this on the label, and this is important. The label's the contract. Um, I keep saying this. I keep saying this because it's so important. It's never been more important than it is now. And they talk about the, the geology. The water from our well flows across volcanic rock and filters through Jurassic sandstone, adding minerals crucial to flavour development. Now, I have to add that our, you know, this is a topic for debate amongst the Real Malt series. Is minerality within water really that significant when it comes to to flavour specifically, I would start by saying it's very significant when you're paying a premium for a premiumised authentic product. Location is so important. I would say that um, if you are diluting this whisky down a little bit further from its 46.4%, you do not need to be buying bottled water from the Isle of Rasse to do so. You do not need specific mineralated waters to do so. Just use clean, fresh, dechlorinated, defluorinated water, um, which is not going to taint, particularly the chlorine, where it's going to taint your whiskey. You've paid the premium. Don't undermine the results of the premium you've paid for, for the experience. So they're telling us about the geology here. They're telling us about specifically their water. That they're not the only distillery to to have this feature of using water well, artesian wells. Other distilleries um, um, are in, like Kings Barn, for example. Uh, they use local water as well. But they also go on to talk about the casks they use for both the peated and the unpeated versions of their whisky. So they're talking about rye, X-rye casks, chinkapin oak, which is quite an aromatic oak. Um, a little bit, you could compare it to uh, um, Mizunara, Japanese oak. It's got that kind of slight aromatic note to it. And uh, Bordeaux red wine, ca red wine cask. <laughs> They may use Bordeaux, ex-Bordeaux red wine casks, which are wet and have a red wine addition of their whiskey. That wouldn't surprise me. But what you really need to understand from the red Bordeaux, Bordeaux is a, an important wine region in France, and they invest heavily in using European oak casks for maturing their wines. So what the distilleries distillery are doing here from Rassi is on the label they're giving us some understated quiet information that they're being very selective and investing heavily in their wood policy. Now I just like to say that if you find this whiskey expensive it's because they're investing a lot of money and spending a lot of money in good casks. If they wanted they could have get they could have got tired old jobbing casks in Scotland at half the price. But these young distilleries, these new distilleries, if they're getting it right, and quite a few are and some aren't, it's just the way it goes, the, the benefits are manifest in the product. There will be a premium attached to that and therefore we should expect to pay a little bit more.
but not too much more. Another feature of RASI that I would like to point out is they have quite a lot of staff, like Springbank. They are hand heavy uh, on location, so they have a big pool of staff because of the level of manual production of their product. They are not heavily mechanised and I think this also is important. It's authenticity. Terwear has a price tag and as time goes on, so long as the quality is there, I think that the additional premium to a certain extent is justified. But what you've got to watch out is that some shops and some locations will say, here's the fancy scotch. This is the new premium scotch. Uh, people will expect to pay more. So let's just pitch the price higher than even it should be. So be aware of these outlets and retailers that are doing it. Talk about it online, discuss it and start boycotting them. Because let's be clear about this, there's some real opportunists in the whiskey scene. Taste. Spicy, sweet, sour, rich, sweet and sour, intense. I'm noticing immediately for a relatively young whiskey, this is seriously well made. This is as good as it gets. Very well made. Good clean cuts and also the alcohol yields that they're getting from their barley are lower than average because you're getting more flavour out the grain. See, it's a, it's a trade-off. You want cheaper whiskey, the distillers get higher yields of alcohol. The more alcohol they get out the grain, the less fullness of flavour they get out the grain. I shall now add some water to this. The peatiness is fresh, Kalila-ish. Right. So it's not smoky peat. It's nippy, spicy, twiggy peat. I've added quite a lot of water to this. One, because it's 46.4%. Two, because there's a lot of flavour in there. And three, because I've been experimenting with this, spending time with it, and I know it takes a lot of water. That is always a good sign. It's a sign of strong casks and strong liquor that's gone into the casks. Savoury. Got a lovely grain savoury not appearing now. Quite delightful. It's amplifying the character of Rassi wonderfully well. Uh, I'm really warming to this. It probably shows. Will I be buying this again? Yes, I probably will. I'll give it a couple of years. It's still a young distillery. They're going to do just fine. I know they are, but I'm going to hold off for a couple of years to let them develop and mature the product. And with luck, fingers crossed, I'll still, be, I'll still be able to buy a bottling because it's not going to go the way of Springbank. Um, where does it all end? I have no idea. Cheers. With the water added, there's a beautiful creaminess, a rich, syrupy creaminess coming off this nose. It is wonderfully characterful. Taste. Showing very well for the young, young age. I reckon this is four or five years old. But it's matured very quickly because of the skill in the use of fresh, active, expensive casks. Malt mark. Multi mark. I can't give it too high a mark. Not yet, it's too young, but I'm really curious about this and I'm glad to be able to post a review in 2023 and I look forward to coming back to Rassi in probably 2025 and just see, see how things are getting on. 82 out of 100, it's a malt mark, it's an integrity malt mark and um, this distillery is going to do well. Now, I just want to give you a wee bit more information here before I conclude this review. See the packaging, 
light, cheap, inexpensive. No frills, but intelligent, intelligently presented. The box is being used not for marketing blurb, but for some genuine, useful information. They show the location of the distillery on a little mini map. They tell you about the um, Basically, this uh, I'll quote here, quote, Every drop of spirit is distilled, matured and bottled on the island using water from our well. They talk about the casks. They repeat what they've put in the label, that this is natural colour non-chill filtered. So it's on the label and on the box. Distillers, I hope you're listening to this and taking note, because it's pissing me off. When I hear about people wasting their time having to phone you because you won't tell them, you refuse to tell them on the label what they want to know. Show, distillers, please show some respect to your customers. And thank you, Rassi, for showing some respect for your customers. There's one thing Rassi needs to do now. One more thing to really elevate the status. They need to get barley onto the Isle of Rassi and do their own maltings. Even if they don't do 100% maltings, they need to do some seasonal maltings. That's the next step forward, not just for Rassi, but for all contemporary young distilleries. It's not rocket science. My goodness, they've even, they've even malted barley in the back of a lorry before. You don't need much to do it. Right. They talk about the six cask recipe. Uh, they give good, clear um, directions to their website and they give you, if you want it, some flavour notes. Aromatic smoke, lightly peated, savoury spice, black pepper, cinnamon, crystallised ginger. The general references, but hey, something's better than nothing. I enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, leave a comment. I flick through the comments and although I can't reply to all of them, I do leave a wee heart thingy to say that I've spotted your comment. And um, we'll see you again soon. And if you haven't subscribed, well, why not? It's very, very easy and very, very quick to do. I'm Ralphie from the Bothy, getting out my Carl Clivey clicker because it's time for me to say cheerio.